right, we're going to talk about how you find the intersection of two planes. Um, so that's assuming that they intersect, and we're going to assume they intersect in a line, um, which is what happens when they intersect. So let's say we have this plane, um, and then we have another plane. And the line of intersection, I mean, it's pretty easy to see here, would look like that. And what I want you to do is think of this as two walls. So you might be sitting in a room right now, or it's pretty easy to picture a room. Um, so think about where two walls come together. And then the line that we're talking about is kind of the seam that goes from the floor to the ceiling. So the reason I want you to think about that is because it's really easy to imagine these being uh, perpendicular planes. They don't have to be perpendicular for this to work, but if you start out imagining that they're perpendicular, it's a little easier because you can picture the normal vector um, to each of the walls. So for example, the normal vector to the first wall, if the two walls are perpendicular, the normal vector to that wall should be um, coming off perpendicular to it. So you could actually draw it on the other wall. Um, that's if they're perpendicular. And then the same is true for the other one. So we would have this. And then obviously, once you draw it like that, those are both perpendicular to the line that we're looking for. So since they're both perpendicular to the line that we're looking for, um, and let's call them A and B, the direction vector of the line is actually the cross product of those. Um, because the cross product is going to be orthogonal to the two vectors that we are crossing, uh, and we're looking for a vector that is orthogonal to the two vectors. So if we cross them, we're going to get uh, the vector that we're looking for. So that's actually going to be the direction vector of our line. Okay, now I told you to um, imagine that the walls were perpendicular to each other. Uh, now, if you can imagine it, imagine that they're not perpendicular to each other. Um, so just kind of change that angle, or imagine one of the walls swinging, or maybe it's a door uh, swinging. Uh, it doesn't change the relationship of uh, the normal vectors to the line of intersection. It changes the relationship to each other, but not to the line of intersection. Um, so we can still cross them. We'll still get the direction vector of that line that we're looking for. Uh, we're also going to need a point that's on the line. And uh, you may or may not like the way that we do this. So here's how we go about finding the point, or how I usually do it. Uh, what I do is first I let z equal 0. So I'm going to have two equations for my planes. I'm going to let z be 0 in both of them. Uh, if z is equal to 0 what's going to happen is that I'm going to get a system of equations that's just in x and y. So I can solve that system for x and for y. And once I solve that, um, that's the point that I'm going to use. So it's going to be something x, some value for x, some value for y, and then 0 for z. Um, you can, of course, choose x is 0 or y is 0. It doesn't really matter. Um, you could actually, I guess, uh, no, you definitely want to do that. So pick one and then uh, solve for the other two. Uh, let's take a look at an example. So here are my planes. So I have 2x plus y plus 3z equals 4. And I have 3x minus y plus 4z equals 6. Uh, so right away, one of the reasons you want to work with planes as much as you can is so that you can just uh, look at them and kind of peel off information. So I know the normal vector to the first plane is 2, 1, 3. And I know the normal vector to the second one is 3, negative 1, 4. So what I have to do is I have to cross product those because the cross product of those is going to be the direction vector for the line that I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm just actually going to add um, i, j, and k above these. And you can kind of see the 3 by 3 determinant that we're going to do. Um, so to find the first component, we uh, cross out the row and column that i is in and do the 2 by 2 determinant of 1, 3, negative 1, 4. So it's 4 and then minus negative 3, which is 7. Uh, then I'm going to cross out the row and column that j are in. So I have... Uh, 2 times 4, which is 8, minus 3 times 3, so 8 minus 9 is negative 1, but that column always gets a negative in front of it, so it's negative negative 1, so it's 1. And then cross out the row and column for k, um, and I have 2, 1, 3, negative 1, so 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 3 times 1 is 3, so that's going to give me negative 5. Okay, so I'm going to box that, because that's the direction vector, so that's kind of like a sub-step that I needed. And now I'm going to go ahead and find the point. So I'm going to let z equal 0, and that gives me 2x plus y equals 4 from the first plane, and 3x minus y equals 6 from the second plane, and this is a 2 by 2 system. You can solve it however you want. This one turns out to be pretty easy to solve by uh, just elimination. Just add those two equations. Um, and ultimately I get x is 2, and then what I'll do is I'll take that, and I'll use this equation, I guess. So 3 times 2 minus y equals 6, uh, and it turns out, this is kind of weird, that y is equal to 0. Uh, so the point that I'm going to use is the point 2, 0, 0. You can check that that point's on both of the planes 
Um, so if you go up to the uh, the first plane, the green plane, it's uh, 2 times 2 plus 0 plus 0, so that's 4. And for the second one, it's 3 times 2 minus 0 plus 0, so that's 6. So it works for both of them. Uh, so we have the point and we have the uh, direction vector. So let's write the line using parametric equations. Um, so there's our equation for our line. One nice thing that you probably want to do at this point is check to see if you got this right. So uh, a kind of easy way to check is uh, pick a value of t and plug it into your line to generate another point that's on the line of intersection. So I'm going to get the point uh, 9, 1, negative 5. Take the point 9, 1, negative 5 and make sure that it's on both of the planes that you were given. So if I plug into the first one, I get 18 plus 1 minus 15 is equal to 4, definitely. Um, and then if I plug into the second, I get 27 minus 1 minus 20, which is definitely 6. So I found the line of intersection. Um, that's how I do it pretty much every time. I think that understanding it is a lot better than trying to memorize the process, um, and I hope you found this helpful. So good luck.